Thank you. Welcome everybody to Fall Report Authority meeting. Uh, I'd like to first do a roll call. Call this meeting October 19th, 2021, 5 p.m. in the Government Center. So may I have a roll call? Council President? Here. State your name. John Medeiros. Present. Ken Fiola. Thank you everyone for coming. I know how busy everyone's lives is. I've been on this board uh, probably almost 30 years and it's not very often we get blessed with the presence of the mayor of our city or the council president. So thank you. Uh, first order of business, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person can make an audio or video recording of this meeting or may transmit this meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings and transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledgeable and permissible. Uh, I'd like to start out, the four of you are going to embark on this mission uh, to be members here and subsequently down the line uh, to become members of the Far River Line Pier. I'd first like to state for the benefit of uh, our esteemed guests as well as the watching audience what the mission of the Fall Report Authority is. The Fall Report Authority is responsible to assure regulatory compliance and safe waterways. The board shall recommend to the city council solutions to problems brought forth to the attention by the public as it pertains to waterways and vet proposals for pro improvements and activity on our waterway here in the city of Fall River. Uh, at this point, uh, I'd like to turn over the meeting to our attorney, David Sullivan. Are you ready? I have to step in that quick, Michael. <laughs> sure, sure. We have just to, um, well, I can appoint the members first. Yeah, why don't we appoint the members first? So essentially what we're going to need to do is have a vote um, of the um, Port Authority to authorize the members of the Port Authority to serve as members of the Fall River Line Pier. So why don't we, if we could, if we can have a motion to that effect. So I'll make a motion that we nominate the members of the Fall River Port Authority to then become active members for the Fall River Line Pier. And I would do a, just a, do a roll call of the members of just the Port Authority, please. Second. Roll call of the members. Roll call. Yep. Jack Medeiros. Don Surratt, Meryl Cadero. Missing uh, Michael Lund. Yes. And missing is uh, Pat Norton. He couldn't join us tonight because of a, a conflict with the Narrow Center. So as a result of this vote, <clears throat> the members of the Port Authority are now subject to becoming members of the Fall River Line Pier by virtue of the Fall River Line Pier bylaws. And then I think discussion, uh, your next agenda item will be discussion and duties and responsibility of the Fall River Line Pier by the Fall River Line Pier, David Sullivan, Attorney David Sullivan. So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we actually have a Fall River Pier here in Fall River. Uh, in addition to the other pier that's further to the north, um, this pier has um, a working pier boats come in and out, there's a, a warehouse, there are things that are stored there, and uh, the Four River Line Pier is not a um, city agency, it is a separate corporation, and it's a, I guess you could call it a quasi-governmental corporation, uh, and <clears throat> the corporation is made up of members, and the members are the appointees of the Port Authority, the mayor of the city of Fall River, the treasurer of the city of Fall River, the president of the city council, and uh, all of those people are 
members. So um, the goal of the Forville IP of the corporation <coughs> itself is to run the business of the peer. People rent space, people bring in ships, they get charged fees. It's a, it's a business corporation, okay? And uh, by your uh, presence on the Florida of the Port Authority, you then become uh, a member of the Florida of the Line Pier. Uh, so the Florida of the Line Pier has been in existence since the 1940s. Um, the business has changed somewhat at the pier um, over the course of the years. Uh, the bylaws have not necessarily kept up with the, uh, the business at the pier. Um, there has been a board of directors. Uh, Michael has been on the board of directors forever, uh, not literally, but figuratively. Um, and he knows everything about the pier, certainly knows a heck of a lot more about it than I do. So he, he would be a great source of information relative to uh, the pier itself. So the, the pier, um, the physical pier itself, um, being run by this corporation, uh, has a board of directors, like any other corporation. And the board of directors will be elected by you folks. And uh, the board of directors will consist of a president, vice president, treasurer, and clerk of the corporation. Michael is currently the duly elected clerk of, uh, treasurer of the corporation. As treasurer, he is responsible for the custody of all of the, the monies and income of the company. And he's the one who's tasked with signing all of the company checks. Okay. <clears throat> the previous board members, um, through apathy, uh, stopped appearing at meetings, didn't have meetings. Some of the, uh, Michael's always been very involved. Uh, Kurt Oliveira was very involved. Uh, Mark Veloso was very involved. Um, and as a result, um, those folks are no longer on the board. Um, so it's time to replace them in their capacity as officers of the corporation. And, uh, you know, you folks will have to decide amongst yourself who you want to be the president, treasurer, clerk of the corporation, president, vice president, clerk, and treasurer of the corporation. Um, in addition, uh, the corporation has several bank accounts or funds, as they refer to them. And there is a, there's a dredging fund, there's a, a capital fund, um, there are funds that have been created for money, revenue that has been derived from um, people renting the pier and using the pier. Mid 2000 teens, the city of Fall River had an agreement with, I should take a step back. We don't own, when I say we, I'm talking about you folks, not, not, not you know. We don't own the pier. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts owns the pier. Um, we get tasked with using the pier, managing the pier, renting the pier, using the pier as business, and then we're supposed to give the money to the state. Um, and there was a lease in place for many years whereby the state would lease the pier to the four of a line pier. The pier could use it <coughs> as it wanted under the parameters of the lease itself and the bylaws, etc. <coughs> and the state decided that they did not want to continue to have leases with the city of Fall River and they did not want to take on the task, the managerial task of negotiating leases and oversight and everything else. So they passed that off to DCR, which is the, uh, the Department of Community, uh, Community Recreation. Conservation. Conservation Recreation. So, so DCR has been charged by the state to sort of be in charge of the pier. 
PCR didn't want it. Uh, if you get the hint, this is like a hot potato, right? Nobody wants to deal with it. Um, so DCR didn't want it, and they passed it off to Mass Development. Mass Development is a, is a corporation that's hired by DCR to manage um, their properties. Okay. And um, amongst them are, is the pier in New Bedford and the pier in Fall River. So uh, currently, and, and the, the lease that went back to like 2014, I think, or 2016, the legislative authority of Massachusetts to, to enter into leases with the city of Fall River changed. And that's really why the state passed it over to DCR, and then DCR passed the responsibilities over to um, um, the mass development. So um, as a result, for quite some time, rents have been collected down at the pier. Um, fees have been collected down at the pier, and they've been put into a bank account. And for many years, um, at the end of the year, the Forever Line Pier would pay those funds back to the state of Massachusetts. That stopped. The state was OK with the fact that it stopped. And we started depositing that money into a bank account. And there are substantial funds in the account. Um, <clears throat> there's a dredging account where the state provided some money to dredge down at the pier, um, but it required um, engineering and a lot of other work that was going to amount to more than what the grant was to do the dredging. Um, so um, that fund, that fund has been sitting there. That dredging account is sitting there. Um, you know, that's it's in existence. That's all I can tell you. Um, so <clears throat> um, back in, I'm going to say maybe April or May. I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. But back in April or May. The director of the pier, a woman by the name of Diane, and Diane basically ran the pier. She paid the bills, she interfaced with the tenants, she charged the rent. The board of directors really just made sure that Diane had all the resources that she needed, and you know they they checked in with her, she checked in with them, and everything sort of ran smoothly. Well, Diane decided that she wanted to retire, and <clears throat> she literally gave two weeks' notice. Um, it was supposed to be two months' notice, but it turned into two weeks' notice. As a result, uh, what was left of the board of directors tried to decide what they were going to do with the pier because somebody needed to manage the pier. Right? And with Diane gone, I mean, we have a fiduciary duty to the state to manage this property. Okay? So. Um, because we were in such exigent circumstances, uh, the board decided to consult with the city, talk to the mayor, and uh, the mayor, you know, sort of left the board to their own devices and said, "You guys can do whatever you want. You know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what to do and what not to do." And uh, the board decided that they would engage Ken and his his group, uh, Bristol County uh, Economic Development, to come in and manage the pier on a temporary basis, um, and there's currently a, a contract uh, with Ken to manage the pier, and his, his group gets paid a monthly fee to do that. And, uh, we say with Ken, but it's not with me. Yeah, no, no. Not I, with I, me I, personally, yeah, right, because right, right. a lot of times <coughs> people think it's with me personally. I just want to put a record it's with right. BCEDC, so I have no financial, direct financial benefit from the contract. Um, and it's, it's commensurate with the amount of money that Diane was getting paid uh, when she was managing the pier. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> mass development, again, if you remember, is DCR's agency, management agency. Mass development has been pushing the four of a line pier to enter into an agreement, a written agreement, to manage the pier. The agreement has some inherent problems that we think exist, and I can advise you about those as a board 
but not in a public forum because that's attorney-client privilege. But uh, so I can advise you about the issues relative to the relative to the to the contract itself. But um, one thing I can tell you is that the, that the the mass development does not want to give the city a lease. They just want a management agreement. In other words, they want the city to provide a group of volunteers, such as yourselves, to manage their peer. And you folks don't get paid. The city doesn't get any benefit from it. And ultimately, they want the money to go back to the state. Um, so, um, you know, I think, in my humble opinion, and I'm certainly not trying to put myself in your place, because you folks are the ones that will make the decision. But in my humble opinion, we're at a very critical stage relative to the poor of a peer. Uh, and what it will be in the future, completely forgetting about what it's been in the past, because that's almost, almost irrelevant. But what it does in the future and what it does for this city um, and how it does things within the city is something you folks are all going to have to decide. And I think once you decide that, we have to dovetail that into the um, agreement that's pressing upon us by mass development, right? Because mass development is riding us hard to get some type of an agreement in place. And they want answers, and you know, we need to give them answers, but we need a board first, right? We need a board before. We need a board, the board needs to get up to speed on the contract, the board needs to review the contract, the board needs to make some decisions as to what they want to do with the, what they want to, what they want to do with the peer, and then the board has to, you know, instruct me to contact mass development and tell them what they want to do relative to the peer. Um, I think that one of the things you should know is that the peer, like any other building and like any other property, is in need of some serious capital improvements. And I'm not talking about five or ten thousand dollars. There's millions of dollars of work to be done at the pier. <clears throat> and the question becomes: Do you want it to be a tourist attraction? Do you want it to be a cultural thing? Do you want it to be a working waterfront? Do you want it to be business? Those are all questions that you folks are going to have to answer as to what you want to see do, done with that property. It's a critical piece of the city's waterfront. It's an integral piece of the city's waterfront. And I think you guys really ought to you know, take the time and, and, and decide how you want to do this because I think we only have one shot with mass development. We're not going to be able to go back to them and, and say, you know, this is what we want and then they agree to it and then we decide we want something different, you know, six months or a year down the road. Now, the, other, the only other floating things out there that you folks should know about is there's a contract between mass development and DCR that's set to expire. We don't know whether we don't know whether Mass Development's contract with DCR is going to get renewed. Chances are it will, but I don't know if it does. Whether we're going to be confronted with the same people, the same administration, and whether we're going to be confronted with the same questions by Mass Development once this contract gets negotiated. The other thing is that you know there is a possibility that we could deal with. Um, you know, the state government and the legislature to try to do something different with the peer. And, you know, I only say that as, a, as, as food for thought uh, because I sat in enough, um, Governor Baker, here's this, he's going to kill me, but uh, I've sat in enough fundraisers for Governor Baker where he said that the state is dying to divest itself of property that it doesn't use and that it doesn't <coughs> get any money from. And I can tell you over the last 10 years, the state hasn't gotten any money from the four of the peer. We have the money, and the state isn't looking for it. And you should also know that as part of the, as part of the agreement with Mass Development, Mass Development isn't saying, oh, by the way, you owe us 10 years worth of rent. They're, 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 they're fully, they're fully copacetic with the bank accounts the way they are, the funds being where they are. There's been some discussion as to whether those funds could be used for capital improvements to the peer. But the problem is I don't think there's enough there to you know, to, to do what needs to be done. Um, and certainly, you all would have to decide what the ultimate long-term goal is for the peer in order to decide how you're going to spend 
that money on capital improvements, right? You're not going to put in wharfage and pilings if you're thinking more of a cultural center as opposed to, you know, a shipping destination. So, you know, that's something that all of you folks need to, need to think about and, uh, you know, ultimately we need to uh, schedule a meeting for the board of directors for the four of the pier and uh, we need to, uh, you know, go over some of these things and get, get, our, get our offices elected and things like that. So uh, that's about... If I can just yeah, sure. follow up on some of the couple of things um, that Attorney Sullivan had alluded to, but maybe I can go into a little bit more depth. So I think you should, you know, you have a book here that gives you sort of a background of the pier from the inception of the pier in the 1940s through the 2014. You have a uh, 2020 operating statement, uh, 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 calendar year operating statement. Um, but what's not in here is a couple things. So the pier itself is a secured facility. So if you go down there, you see it's fenced off. There's a guard shack there. <clears throat> it has a MARSEC levels, different levels of uh, the types of security that have to be in place during certain times of the year or during certain times of the event. Because it's a secured facility, it's also regulated by the Coast Guard. Uh, the Coast Guard was in a couple weeks ago, or maybe a little bit, maybe three, four weeks ago. They did their annual inspection. Um, happy to report that the only thing they asked us to do was because there's a question as to whether or not some hazardous waste, uh, hazardous materials may be handled. They want to make sure that all the tenants of the state here have hazardous waste, ha hazardous uh, materials training and also our operation guy at the pier also is trained for hazardous waste um, but not anybody can go on to the pier okay because it's secure there's for a foreign vessel that comes in every five to six weeks that foreign vessel usually brings cargo to uh, Cape Verde um, there's a uh, sometimes that foreign vessel also comes in and brings cargo to Haiti so there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of activity taking place there. So uh, when when you're up and running a little bit further, one one thing I want to probably ask everybody needs to get it what they call a TWIC card, which is a transportation worker identification credential. And every time you go onto the pier, and you as board members would have the right to go onto the pier, you all show that TWIC card. Everybody going onto the pier has to show a TWIC card if they're working there. <coughs> and entering into restricted areas. So there's a lot of regulation associated with this pier right now. There are two primary tenants. There are a bunch of ships that are tied up. Uh, you can see in the, um, if I can go through it quickly, if I, um, you can see in the information I provided to you under the, under the 2020 financials, uh, January through December, they had um, a total income of uh, just about 600, 676,000, uh, total expenses of 473, uh, net income of about 202,000. Okay, so that's, that's somewhat consistent with the, what they've done in years past. That's consistent to what we're doing with it right now. My office involvement, BCEDC's involvement in the pier right now is to make sure it's remaining operational making sure that um, twicks are in place, making sure that regulations are being adhered to, facil facilitating the inspections with the Coast Guard, and also uh, making sure that the tenants are doing what they're, what they're, what they're supposed to be doing, as well as uh, working on this year's audit, which is underway, and facilitating accounts payable and accounts receivable on a weekly basis. So we're providing that overall management. And actually, we're doing it a little bit cheaper than what Diane Butler was doing it for. You know, so our fees are not as much as her salary, although we're providing the same sort of assistance to the peer corporation um, as was that she was doing. So moving forward, I think, you know, Attorney Sullivan has uh, caps, uh, you know, sufficiently uh, encapsulated the uh, the issues that are at hand <coughs> here. Mass Development is, in fact, looking to get this license agreement uh, executed. Um, I think the, you know there's good reasons why we should really consider that, but they have to be done in accordance with the terms that the Fall of the Line Pier Board thinks are appropriate. 
Um, I don't think we want to, and I don't perceive our relationship being with mass development as adversarial. I think we want to work with them in partnership. Uh, certainly, if we're going, if there's any movement towards transitioning this pier, it's not going to happen overnight. It would have to happen over a period of time. I've also included a bunch of studies, uh, past studies of the state pier, that have looked at shipping uses and alternative uses here um, for the pier facility. The one thing that jumps out at you, if you go down there, you have an, uh, I think it's a, just over an eight acre parcel, maybe a close to a 10 acre parcel. And right now there's only 10 jobs being generated on the pier facility. So that's less than, you know, let's say it's 10 acres, it's one, one job per acre, which is extremely low. Um, but it's also providing a shipping purpose, which maintains a deep water use. So there's a bunch of different things and there's complexities of things that have to be navigated through. Uh, it's just not as easy just to change the use down there because it is within, I don't want to get too technical, but it's within a designated port area. A DPA mandates that you have to maintain water dependent uses and industrial water dependent uses. So in order, if you're going to change that, you'd have to deal with the designation that's currently there. Um, and because it's filled in tidelands, much like the city pier, you just can't plop buildings on there without going through a licensing procedure. The, the pier itself is clean, to the best of my knowledge. As I don't know if there's been any environmental testing there, but I don't think there's any use that would cause contamination there. So this is a very valuable a complicated piece of property along Florida's waterfront. And I think you know, the, 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 what the four of a line pier needs to do is really wrap itself around how they're going to utilize this pier for the short term and the long term and work with all the agencies because you have to get buy-in from everybody. You know, the four of a line pier just couldn't say I want to do X, Y, and Z without having to buy in from the state, DCR, the city, and then the Coast Guard and Army Corps of Engineers, if you're really depending on the uses that you're doing there. Um, you know, it's a little bit, it's, I don't want to say it's funny, but the pier, the location of the pier itself is in the heart of what people are now seeing a revitalized waterfront where you have the battleship who actually ties up to the pier and they use a little piece of that pier for their own uses, which is a tourism activity. Um, and then you have this industrial shipping use. And um, you, right now you have a lot of cars and half cars and other things that are being shipped to these countries for parts. And some of them are whole cars, but there's a juxtaposition between the cars, the battleship, the carousel, the marine museum, the activities that are taking place down there. There's just a lot of stuff going on. And there's truck traffic, yeah, so you really got to sit back and fully vet these things out and figure out which direction you're going to go in while being cognizant of the regulations that are in place, allowing you and actually providing guidance to you as to what can be done and what can't be done. And if you're going to go into areas of things that can't be done, then you got to figure out how you get there. And I don't think that's going to happen overnight. So it's a, it, it, it's a tremendous asset, right? There's a lot of good things that are happening there, and there's a lot of great things that could be happening there, depending on the direction that you'd want to go into. But that direction is also predicated upon having approvals from the state in order to, 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 to do that, right? So you just couldn't say, I want to stop shipping tomorrow and move forward with a festival marketplace. You couldn't do that, right? Because you got to be get the permission of everybody, to sign off from everybody, and also be cognizant of the long-term tenant that's currently there. We also got to start looking at the fees that are being charged down there, you know, in terms of per square footage prices for indoor storage, outside storage, and those types of things. So I'm hoping that the fall of the line pier, and I, I'm encouraged by the fact that there's a, uh, a new board in place. I'm encouraged by the, the presence of the mayor and the city council president um, as being part of this Fall River Line Pier. And I think moving forward, an engaged Fall River Line Pier will be great for the city and 
an overall piece of the puzzle as to how this whole waterfront parcel has been developed. We see how other industrial parcels along the waterfront have been uh, developed, everything from Board and Light Marina to the other amenities that um, Mike Lunn has provided on the old on the old on the old oil tank farm that used to be there, and how he's transformed that. You see how mill buildings that were once industrial and manufactured have been converted. We have the Route 79 project, which is going to open up 19 developable acres for 1.1 million square feet of developable space. You have the battleship, you have the carousel, you have the Heritage State Park, you got the train. There's a lot of things swimming around. They're all out there floating and swimming, and we just got to figure out how best we can connect them in such a fashion that it's good for everybody. So that's going to be your charge. And you know, we will continue to provide services to the Fall River Line Pier uh, at your will and at your direction until such time you decide to go off of full-time management. And we would probably, you know, at that point, we would make a decision to bid on that or not bid on that. But as David said, we stepped in because there was an abrupt departure of the Fall River Man and somebody had to do it. I needed to go get my, it sounds kind of, kind of corny, but facility service uh, officer training so that I'm responsible for all the security at that state pier right now, right? So that's why everybody needs a TWIC card. That's why I have to have things in place. That's why I work with the Coast Guard to get all these things done. But these are things because it's a, um, it's a regulated port that are mandated by the regulations to have an FSO down there to work with the Coast Guard and the state and everybody else to make sure that we're, uh, we're operating in accordance with regulation. So I think it's going to be, it's got the potential to be very exciting and uh, I think you hold the, uh, the reins to uh, dictating the future of that city pier, of that state pier. Yes. Is there any chance with uh, the new board members like you did for me and I'm yeah, I would love to do that. So what we, we would arrange for the tour. I'm also going to arrange for it. So when you come on the pier facility, you'd have to come on with myself or somebody else with a TWIC card. Because of the regulations, we got to keep you in eye shot and we'll walk you through the facility so that you get a first hand understanding of it. And then what I would also like to get is get everybody TWIC card, excuse me, TWIC card certified where you have to go through an FBI background check, fingerprinting, and everything else, which shouldn't be a problem. And it usually takes, you know, four or five weeks to get that TWIC card. But once you get that TWIC card, then you'd have the right to go on there, independent of oversight for myself or someone else with the TWIC card. So go, getting down there and seeing it firsthand, I think, would also uh, enlighten you as to uh, the existing operations and what potential future operations may uh, be available. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the status with the tenant that's there? Because as you know, I, I've met with him. Correct. He shared some concerns, and I agree. I'm happy I had the opportunity to walk it because right. the site does need a tremendous amount of work. Yeah. Uh, and we're not talking, like you said, a couple thousand dollars. You're talking about hundreds to millions mm -hmm. to, to make that facility user-friendly. Yeah. So I guess my question is, what is the deal with the tenant? Is he a long-term tenant? Is he planning to stay there? All, all tenants are tenants at will right now because we don't have the ability, we don't have a license agreement or an agreement with DC, uh, I mean with Mass Development DC. Rent? He is paying rent. What is he paying rent? Um, so he's the prime, he has two uh, operations there. He's, there's only one tenant there, right? The, no, there's a bunch of tenants. So you have Atlantic Shipping and Atlantic um, Trading. They're two different corporations. Owned by the same group. Owned by the same group. And then you have... Um, the Haiti operation um, that has its own um, sending their product, their cars, to Haiti. And then you have some fishing boat revenues and you have other revenues on dockage. So the actual rentals were about 298000 collectively between, between the, all the tenants. I believe Atlantic Shipping and Atlantic Trading probably, you know, the uh, collective rents of those <coughs> Probably somewhere in the vicinity of about 225 to 200, probably 200 to 225,000. So he's paying 25,000 25, a month? He's paying, yeah, somewhere in that, don't hold me exactly, but somewhere in that vicinity. And, and triple net and all that other stuff? Or? It is, it is triple net, uh, but like I said earlier, there's 
For instance, you know, what, the thing that jumped out at me is on the outside storage of the facility, they're paying 12 cents uh, a square foot for, for rental of space, which is extremely low, right? Outside storage is probably going closer to a dollar a square foot in other areas. Inside, it may be also a little low. So I think moving forward, we just got to take a look at that because is that market rate, is there, you know, because it's costly to maintain this facility, right? And so just trying to figure those things out. And he's, he's a very good tenant. He's got a nice operation. I have no ill will or anything bad to say about him. He does, you know, they've been there for a number of and times. He speaks extremely highly of you as well. Yeah, it's just, again, it's just a question of what's, what's the right mix, right. right, and how we figure that out. And I don't think anybody's looking to dispose of him tomorrow or dispose of him at all if that's what the board wants to do. But I think everything's just up for... Um, for discussion and maybe there's there's ways in which there's different types of tenants can coexist with each other. And just one final question. I saw on the expenses it says child support. Any idea why there's an expense for child support? That would be that's probably I would imagine that that is um, it's an a employee that had an obligation. Yeah, they take it right out of right out, out of their, the right out of their paycheck. Right. I don't know if it's through uh, through the state or through the IRS. So it's right out of their place. paycheck. Got it. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Here does not have any children. <laughs> <laughs> he is not supporting any children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might want to relabel that. Yeah, 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 and this is this is this is theirs. So we're yeah. reworking it right now. So we're putting our little, you know, the the categories are going to be a little bit re, re uh, identified. So I, yeah. I, just, I guess I just don't understand it. The, the tenant is responsible for the 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 water, sewer, taxes, utilities, triple net. Mm -hmm. Why are there expenses that the, that the city pier, that the Fall River Line Pier have for electricity and insurance and stuff like that? Because you have perimeter lighting, you've yeah. got insurance for someone just walking on the pier. The tenant doesn't. It's not a truly a triple net. It's not truly that's, a triple that's net. That's correct. So it's not a true triple net. No, so no. They're, not paying, they're not paying for portions of the um, insurance, for instance. And they're, they're only paying for their own, there's probably, I don't know. Personal property, et cetera. Yeah, and it's, it's probably on it. Just there's different water meters, there's different electrical meters that are assigned to the tenants, and they're paying directly for those. So, it's a yeah, it's a little bit convoluted there. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, I like just to give a few of you uh, background. If you if you want to run now, you can. <laughs> Now's your shot, cause. Uh, I, I think council and uh, Mr. Fiola have really laid it out for you. Uh, I've been on this pier for 25 years or so, maybe longer. And during that time, we've been subjected to multiple administrations, both here locally and at the State House. And when you have change in administrations locally and at the State House, uh, oftentimes then the mission of the pier would change and so you oftentimes you know people say well why didn't this happen well your hands were tied because you were all in on one administration to do one thing and then the governor changed and that was no longer now a priority uh so it was uh to the board chagrin that you you get geared up you you be in a position to do something and over the course of 25 years i Kenny will tell you there was short sea shipping was a, was a big thing that was going to come to Fall River. And then there were some cruise ships. And then there was rail car. And uh, then it was, uh, there, at one time, there was a plan to demolish in half the pier and have it in an entertainment venue. Um, so there, there's been a wave of ideas. But at the end of the day, now, all these years later, as it pertains to the city of Fall River itself, for the city of Fall River, like most communities its size, old industrial communities on the east coast of the United States, when they have experienced the renaissance, the renaissance came from the water up. It did not come from the downtown down to the water. The renaissance in small cities in this country started at the water and moved up. And now recognizing this, and in the process of that, shipping has changed, how products move across this country have changed. So what kind of role does a real port uh, uh, that's limited overhead bridges, limited by depth, limited as being 14 miles, up, almost 15 miles up Narragansett Bay, 
Uh, no upland storage. With no upland storage. You you go to a bona fide commercial port anywhere on the East Coast, whether it be Norfolk, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, you're talking hundreds and hundreds and thousands of acres. And the interesting thing about them is all of these ports are very low job producing entities. They make large, vast amounts of money for uh, the particular corporations. They, they take up an enormous amount of land but they do not, they're not large job generators. So now we're posed, people always talk about Fall River's waterfront has, has so much, and I find it always comical, because there isn't that much. We abut the water, but there is not that much available land, which is why the state's investing hundreds of millions of dollars to drop Route 79 to create space along the waterfront, because they know that's critical. So now we are charged, we're sitting on this parcel that's dead center. It's dead center between the narrow center, it's dead center between the battleship, kind of anchors in our community that are on an entirely, going in an entirely different direction. And we're all familiar with Quaker. That used to dominate our waterfront. Well, they're no longer there. You know, the issue years ago is tractor trailers coming down. Well, the, there's no, there's no, com, there's no, commercial commerce now. The city, it's finally starting to evolve. And I, and I commend you, Mayor, uh, for absorbing criticism because I do think the time is a, a diverse group of appointees, not just of a maritime tradition. Because the fact of the matter is, if it was a viable maritime facility, it would be utilized far more. And we wouldn't be getting 12 cents a square foot for outside storage. I mean, that's just. It's inconceivable. You get more than that on in someone's parking lot on Plymouth Avenue. And the reason for that is it, 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 it doesn't, you know, price dictates what you can, how popular an amenity is. And we're at, we're in bottom basement prices and there's not a line out the door. There's one or two entities that have been there and they've been running their business out of this facility for a long time, but we are going to have to really dive in, and it's going to be a partnership with the city government. It's going to be a partnership with our local legislative branch and find out what is the true and best interest going forward for the city. And my personal feeling is there is momentum for the first time across the board that we have to look at this pier and how it performs and what it does in a much wider scope than ever before. And uh, so while there's a lot of work, I think it's exciting. And uh, I want to thank you all for making this commitment. Um, and I, you are on the precipice to decide truly, quite frankly, is the largest right now is one of the largest parcels on the water in the city of Fall River uh, that is within the control of the city and the state to do something with, not privately. It's the single largest piece, and it's and it's the nucleus of, of the whole section right around the battleship, and the highway ramp, and the carousel, and the park. So uh, I would say have an open mind, and uh, thank you, Mayor, for entrusting us to take on this challenge, and uh, I want to thank uh, Bristol County Economic Development for stepping in when they did. It was a rather abrupt, uh, I think in the last, uh, what, 60 years, it's been Bill Torfey and uh, Diane Butler, two people in the last 70 years that have been down there. And they're, they're now gone, uh, but our city's different than what it was uh, even 10 years ago. And I would encourage you to look at these types of piers, both on the West Coast and the East Coast, and look at some of what they have done in other communities, whether it be Vancouver, whether it be San Francisco, uh, whether it be right in downtown Manhattan. There was a, if you go down there, there's a building. You swear you were looking at the Fall River Line Pier building. In fact, at one time, it was the Fall River Line Pier building, believe it or not, right in Manhattan. and it, and it totally converted. So um, I think it's exciting, and uh, uh, 
uh, I look forward to working with you, and, and thank you for making the commitment. Um, before we continue on with the agenda under uh, 6 and 7 of new business and old business, through the chair, um, I'd just like to revisit, and I want to make sure that we get this vote correctly under number 3, because I think it was actually the vote was uh, seconded by the mayor. I need to have the vote seconded by a member of the a port authority as opposed to the mayor. So can we just run, run through this vote one more time? So there's a, uh, through the chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, of the appointment of the port authority members to the floor of a line pier. I will need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Yes. Uh, motion carries. So now you are duly organized, uh, duly appointed to be members of the Fall of the Line Pier. And that takes care of that particular issue here in the, the appropriate fashion. As well as Pat Norton. As well as Pat Norton. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, old business, new business, agreement? Not at this time. Okay. So I think we're, um, we're, we're, we can adjourn uh, the meeting, but prior to the adjournment, I will work with Attorney Sullivan and each one of you collectively, the new members of the Port Authority, the existing members of the, uh, excuse the new members of the Fall of the Line Pier, the existing members of the, uh, the Line Pier, to set forth a meeting time and date so we can get into this in a lot greater detail and you know get back to mass development in a timely fashion as to how we can best work with them to achieve the objectives of both mass development and the fall of the line pier. Uh, yeah. uh, so just so everybody knows in a corporate structure the board of directors is is sort of the, the group of people who decide how the corporation is run, what it does and what it doesn't do. In this case what happens is you are the board of directors, you are, you are supposed to be the ones who run the pier. However, you have a superseding, uh, for lack of a better term, handcuff in that you're eventually going to have this agreement with mass development. So it's not like you can do whatever you want, you know, call us, call us in a year for your renewal. You can do whatever you want so long as it coincides with our agreement. So, so you know, you have to remember that um, it's not uncommon in a corporate structure for the board of directors to run a corporation, to decide the direction of the corporation, and to decide what to do. It is unique where a board of directors are, for lack of a better term, hamstrung by an overriding superseding agreement. That's which, they just which mind you, wasn't always the case. Right. We originally had a 50-year lease, and we were left to run and run the pier and then it had some subsequent renewals uh, so it right now it's a it's a hot potato I think it was described and, and we're all adults we all have common sense right if if the state had the ability to do this and the state could make money off of it and the state could turn this from a sow's ear into a silk slipper they would do it but they don't have the ability to and they realize, and they realize that it's here in our backyard. So who else better to run it than people from the city of Fall? And I think, for us, certainly, uh, I won't speak for anybody on the board, but I think it's going to be incumbent upon us as members of the Fall River Line Pier to work with our partners in government and truly dive in to find out what is the best way to move this thing forward. Because as it sits, it's an underperforming asset, both for the public to enjoy the waterfront, as well as from an economic standpoint, a jobs generator, and, and then uh, spring off to what is already down there in that centerpiece of the waterfront. Because so. if you go to mass development and you say, how come you're giving us this agreement? They're going to say, because DCR told us. And then when you go to DCR and say, well, how come? You told mass development to give us this agreement and say, well, the state told us to. Right? Nobody knows why they're doing this, and nobody knows what the purpose is. The only thing they know is they have an agreement, their lawyers have fine-tuned the agreement, this is the agreement they want us to sign, and, you know, at first it was a take-it-or-leave-it situation, and I think we've gotten to the point through delay and through pushback that there's some flexibility as to what we can do. 
which creates opportunity right. for us. I just want to say that uh, when I first got into this office, the uh, state order, Suzanne Bump approached me about the line because she called today and um, wanted me to thank you guys for putting on the board. She said, I'm glad you got a new board down. It seems like things are starting to move. And she was very pleased. And she said, I just want you guys to see you get a meeting coming. I said, we do. She was like, thank you for the service. And said, I thank you. Excellent. Good for me. Motion to adjourn. Oh. I have one question. Okay. Do we know when mass development contracts with DCR expires? June of 2022. So once that expires, would we expect them to renew that, or would that be one less? I would, if I'm a betting man, I'd probably think there would be a renewal of that agreement, but that's not etched in stone. But chances, there's a strong possibility. I would suspect. Unless something happens between now and then. You know, it all depends what happens at DCR. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, um, you know, our former mayor ran DCR for a long time, right? And uh, I'm sure when he was there, he had his own ideas as to what he wanted to do. And then when he left, somebody else came in, somebody else has their ideas what they want to do. But I think Ken's right that the most efficient way for DCR to manage the management of their properties is through mass development. Yeah. Any further questions? You all good? Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.